In this video, we're going to create a custom October Guard tank. We're going to buy a toy Russian tank, design a plan, cut and modify the toy, create and install the hatches, and then paint and finish. The other day I was replacing some O-rings on my October Guard figures, and I realized I didn't have a vehicle for them. In the comic book, the October Guard have a six-wheeled buggy kind of thing, and then a larger eight-wheeled tank sort of vehicle. I did some research, and the larger vehicle kind of looked like the BTR-80. This is sort of like a troop transport for the Russian army. And I realized if I could find a 118th scale version of this, it would be perfect for the October Guard to act as their sort of transport, light tank, infantry fighting vehicle. Looking on the web, it looked like there were some October Guard mods, like people taking Indiana Jones vehicles or sort of six-wheeled tank transports and modifying those. But then I came across an actual BTR vehicle toy, and it was pretty cheap, and it looked like it might work. So I figured I'd order one and see what I could do with it. So I received the toy from Amazon, and it looked pretty good. I liked it. It was actually like made in Russia and sent from Russia. I thought that gave it some kind of cool authenticity or something the October Guard would actually appreciate. One problem is it's a little too small. It's smaller than 1 18th scale, and it's also made of a softer plastic. But when I opened it up, it was completely hollow, so I thought it was a really good shell to start working with. I did a quick sketch over a photograph and I just tried to add as many hatches or compartments as I could. I wanted to see if I could get eight troops into this thing and it seemed like it would be possible. And even though it was a little undersized, it matched that kind of G.I. Joe scale. And as you can see next to a Wolverine sized vehicle, it's about the same size or a little bit bigger. To get started, I made a template for the hatches using the Wolverine hatch as a size. I simply cut out a piece of cardboard to that size and then traced it onto the BTR hull. Next was cutting into the hull, and this is where it gets a little bit scary. I was glad that it only cost $30, so if I ruined it, it wouldn't be a huge loss, but still, you don't want to throw away $30 for nothing. To cut the holes, I'm just using my Dremel with this sharper sort of tip I bought. It's really good for piercing through the plastic and then slowly eating it away. When doing stuff like this, I recommend don't go near the line at first. Sort of take out the middle and leave a nice little gap between the line and where your final cut's going to be. Then do a second or third or fourth pass, getting closer and closer to that line. After a bunch of cutting and getting a bunch of little plastic shavings all over my workspace, I finally had a pretty good idea of how much would, uh, would be cut out of this. It looked a little bit like a Swiss cheese piece, you know, with all the holes in it and stuff like that. I actually, that back part I took out is where the engine is, so this is a little bit unrealistic, but I really wanted to get all eight of those troops in there. And when I mocked it up with guys in there, I thought it looked great. It looked like all eight fit comfortably. It's definitely a compact vehicle, but it's really nice that I could have eight of my October Guard all riding together into battle. Now it was just a matter of creating the hatches that would cover up all those spaces, all those gaps. And I decided I wasn't going to fabricate these out of styrene. I figured 3D printing would be the way to do this and get the best result. So I took a 3D scan of the toy with the cutouts made and then brought that into 3D and just modeled all the hatches to match the gaps. That's not a super accurate way to do it. So I also double checked with measurements just using a ruler and some calipers. I tried to keep the designs of the hatches pretty simple and utilitarian so they would match the sort of BTR vibe, which is, you know, very like simple and sort of like let's just get this job done with all the hatches designed it was just a matter of putting them into the 3d printer getting the prints back and then starting to match those up to the holes i was really excited with how the hatches ended up looking the scale looked right and also the styling and the amount of detail seemed to match up really well so that made me really, really excited and happy. Some of the um, the frames didn't fit perfectly, so I went back and did some shaving down of some of the plastic, you know, going really slowly and just making sure that each one fit. To make sure the hatches would open and close reliably and wouldn't wear out, I 3D printed the hinges uh, as part of the hatch and the door and the frame, but then relied on a one millimeter wire to run through that, and that would act, act as the pin that the hatch would rotate on. I really like working this way because I used to try to make it one piece and everything was 3D printed, but the wire or, you know, even having a larger kind of piece of metal going through there just works so much better. You don't have to worry about it wearing out. You can replace it, you can cut it to fit, and it just really feels more like a real toy would be manufactured. So at this point, it was just a matter of going through and uh, putting the pins into each door and then placing them into the, uh, the chassis of the tank. Once all the doors were in there and they were working, it really um, 
kind of upped the quality of the vehicle. It added a bit more detail and just more like styling. And seeing all the guys in there was just fantastic. It was exactly what I was hoping for. It almost felt like a Russian version of the G.I. Joe um, APC, you know, where you've got all those guys just sitting in the rows. And that's kind of what I was thinking for that back seat there. And you can see I haven't finished the seat yet. So that's the next thing I wanted to figure out. I wanted to make sure that the guys could sit in it and not jiggle around, that there would be sort of like a depression for the figure to fit into. And so I did some tests of that. I wanted to really make sure I nailed down the individual seat and that it would fit into the chassis. But once I had that figured out, it was really fun to just take that seat and duplicate it and figure out how this tub would work with four different seats in it. I also wanted to make sure it would be easy to get the figures in and out. That's always an important play value in a toy like this. You don't want your guys to get stuck in there and not be able to remove them or have to get them in some crazy kind of position. And I also felt this could be a cool area to sort of put backpacks or weapons or just store things if you didn't have, you know, all eight figures in there. But once I mocked it up, I felt like it was really working well. It's really fun to open up those doors and kind of reveal all that detail in there and imagine, you know, storing stuff in there or opening it up and then loading all your troops in. It seemed to work out really well. So at that point, it was just a matter of getting some paint on it. I decided to try to match the outer hatches to something as close as I could get to the green and then the inside to do sort of a bluish color, a blue gray. And I liked how that came out. So once all the pieces were done, I just decided to install them. I'm just using hot glue. I like using hot glue because it's pretty strong. It's easy to work with. And if you make a mistake, you can just peel it off and try again and just, you know, keep working at it until you get the piece in the place you want it to be. Here I just cut a few triangles out of styrene and I'm just hot gluing them against that seating tub. I just thought this might give a little more rigidity to the vehicle and make sure that the tub wouldn't shift around and move because, you know, you have four figures in there and, you know, you just don't want it to go anywhere. But with the tub secured, it was time to close up the hull and then put in the hatches, which, you know, I also used hot glue for. And that was pretty much the last step. Make sure that all the hatches were in, you know, glued in place, that they all fit and um, everything worked out. So it's time to, you know, load up the BTR with some troops and get it outside and take some pictures. Overall, I'm really excited with how this came out. It's exactly what I wanted, a vehicle that could transport my October Guard and somewhat matched up with what they had in the G.I. Joe comic books. Even though the original toy didn't have the right scale, I think that actually worked in my favor because right now, as a finished product, it matches up really well with a Wolverine or a Mobad or a Hummer. But uh, most importantly, it fits eight guys. I mean, eight troops fit into this, which, you know, is not... Um, you know, a, a common thing for a G.I. Joe vehicle. There's, you know, the APC, but I can't think of any other vehicles that fit that many guys. Maybe a Tomahawk. Um, you know, that's about it. And that's what I think makes it so playable. The fact that you can throw eight troops in there or just two and, you know, fill it full of maybe your wounded or just make it, you know, carry some of the weaponry or backpacks or whatever you want to, you know, have it do during your battles. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and that the project was interesting to you. I really liked it because it was sort of a, a shorter, kind of quicker project. And I feel like I've now filled this sort of niche that always needed to be filled, which is give the October Guard something to ride around in. Thanks again for watching the video. Hope to see you in the next video. And yo Joe.